Everybody, it's Chatter here at the 2022 Indiana Robox Invitational. Checking in, TMR 3940 Cybertooth coming here out of Indiana. Uh, one of our, of course, local teams here in Indiana, but honestly, one of my favorite teams uh, in the Midwest, especially. Cybertooth, the cement team, continually on the rise. Not only a great aesthetic, of course, but building great robots uh, every year. One of our Dark Horse teams listed uh, in our prediction show, and you're going to learn more why they are such a great team here as we go all the way through their robot. Help me do more about that, by the way. I have Miranda and Kaden, and I can't wait to talk more about this fantastic machine coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. So Miranda, let's start out with your intake here. Talk to me a little bit more about the design process behind it. Uh, did you do any like uh, testing to make sure this was the right one for you and maybe anything that didn't work for you as well too? Okay, so we chose uh, a design that was flexible enough because we figured there'd be a lot of defense in this game, especially because of all the randomness of the game pieces. So we have this polycarb four bar intake with compliant wheels. It's flexible, we hit walls, we have other robots run into us, and it's only cracked once, and it's super durable. When you were looking uh, from the intake on here, like, did you do any sort of like stress testing on it or anything like that to say like, hey, like, we're still good to go with this type of design? Um, not really. We kind of put it on, and it's always been working for us. That's so. fair. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And how about like your, your choice of uh, uh, wheels on here? I mean, these type of like compliant type wheels, uh, obviously a great aesthetic, no doubt. Uh, yeah. But what, what made you choose like this configuration? We did a lot of CAD uh, modeling of it and seeing where we needed to configure them to always have like one on the ball and never like a dead zone sure. so the balls didn't get stuck in there. And we did actually have to change a couple things in it, but like we had prototypes for that and scooting things around. What are maybe a couple like uh, areas that you can think of that got changed from like removing those dead zones, that sort of thing? I think, I'm pretty sure this was somewhere else. I believe we, also move this down a bit and everything, so it was just moving these around. Sure, and Cybertooth has been, to me, like, I think one of the great things your team has been doing is really quick cycle times for things, and your intake has been doing that really well, for sure. So let's keep moving on uh, on your robot. Uh, Caden's gonna talk about your indexing system. Obviously, you see a couple more compliant wheels here uh, as it goes into your robot. Uh, you got an S-curve as well, too. Love to hear more about how that's been working out for your team, too. Uh, so the first part of our indexer, we have these uh, singulators here, which, so, so the ball can come in here from any angle, and they'll spin it right back into the indexer. Then we have these wheels right like this, going all the way up to send it through. And this curved shape, it's actually the reason we picked our robot name, Cobra, because we think it's a like snake pattern. Makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, when you were looking sorry. from from uh, creating this in the angles, like were you just modeling that all on CAD to try to get the right angles ready? Did you have to make yeah. any adjustments throughout the season for that? Uh, we had to make some adjustments at the very start because we had a problem where the intake would come up and bump into it or it'd interfere with the arms. Sure. So we had to make a lot of changes for that. Makes uh, sense there. And then uh, as it comes through, do you have any sensors that kind of go through the way to, like, to detect cargo or anything like that at all? Uh, no, we do not. Not currently? Gotcha on here. Um, let's go into your shooter uh, here, and Miranda's going to cover a little bit more uh, about that on there. And Miranda, I'd love to hear, it looks like you got a couple positional uh, hood on here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what else has gone into this? Because I see like almost kind of like a feeder wheel that kind of kicks in. Tell me more about it. Yeah. So actually, the way we decided on this shooter, a hooded shooter, was taking our prototype from last year and reprototyping it for this game and moving things to get the angle right for this goal. Sure. So. We knew that we wanted as much contact time as possible to have as much control of the ball speed and energy into it as possible. So we have this extra feeder wheel down here to help regulate that kind of thing. And we have this. Um, we have, we've changed these cylinders to help flatten out the curve of our shots so that they bounce out less. Um, yeah, and then, so for like 
aiming of it, it's obviously not a turret, so we have a targeting light that we do manual aiming with. It turns on, it's super bright, um, honed in light that uh, we use. To Where's kind of the sweet spot for cyber truth on the field? Where do you like to shoot from best? We like the be we like the fender the best. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But we can shoot from the launch pad and from just outside the tarmac, and we can also shoot low goal with um, against the fender. Very cool. And we saw that center just so well. So great design uh, by your team for that, no doubt on there. Uh, let's go into your uh, climber then. I think Caden's going to wind us up talking about that. We'll see how it deploys. And Caden, I'd love to hear uh, if you can just kind of walk us through like the stages of that climber, like what's happening during each part of the deployment for it. Anything else you want to add to your climber as well? So the climber is probably my favorite part of the robot, uh, probably because I was one of the people who helped build it. But the thing is, so once we first get into the hangar, we deploy it all the way up. Okay, we have, yep. And then we drive into the second bar, and then we pull up, and these hooks right here will go back and latch back around it and hold on. Then we can get our climbers and drop them forward. Uh, And we use that and a swing to try and grab the next bar and pull up. And as we're pulling up, these hooks will come off the bar we're on and then latch onto the other one. And that goes all the way up. And we actually went through a couple different variations for these hooks here. We started off just something that came here and went out a bit. And we eventually had to shave some off so it could hold onto the bars better. And then later we had a design similar to this that went more straight down here. And our first few designs were actually metal like this. But we had a problem where the faster we climbed, we would start to mess up a bit and it would bend the bars. So now we have this polycarp here, which is a lot better. And it's a lot more durable. So if it bends, it can just snap back in place when we take it off. Last thing I want to ask you to realize your team has such a fantastic aesthetic uh, that uses. I think it really stands out from the field, which is hard to do in, in FRC nowadays with so many teams on there. Uh, when you look at, at creating what is the aesthetic art piece of a robot here as well, too, why is it important to your team uh, to have such, such a robot that stands out so well? It's important to our team because we want to inspire people to join like robotics and STEM and uh, have this future career. Um, especially since FIRST is so good at introducing people to anything and everything. Because we know it's not just robots, it's also everything else that you can do with FIRST. So we like to make something that's attractive and uh, drawing in everyone. Makes sense. Well, CyberTruth, thank you so much for taking time to tell us about uh, your team and your robot and everything that goes into it. I uh, can't wait to see, of course, uh, future years as well. But of course, good luck here at IRI. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.